What's up? This is Henry from Hammerhead, and you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hello. How you doing? Good. How are you? Sorry, my dog is barking. I'm just going to give him a second to... No worries at all. They've been quiet all day, and then you get on the line, and they're going to start barking like crazy. Mine's the same way. <laughs> Where are you located? Uh, Kansas City. Oh, okay. okay so uh, now, yeah. Is it super, super wicked cold there now? It was. It just changed like yesterday. It was freezing for two weeks, and now it's all good. Oh, nice. Yeah. Lots of snow or not at all? Not a lot. Not a lot uh, in January, no. Just freezing. What yeah. about you? Where are you? I'm in Richmond, Virginia, and it's today's 55, but it's been in the teens. So it's cold, but I guess you're into yeah. negative numbers by you, right? Yeah. 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 That's too much. Not for me. <laughs> so let's talk about Hammerhead then. Yes, sir. How, what was it like growing up in your household? Were you all into music right from the get go? And where did the inspiration come from? All you three brothers, metalheads? Um, yeah, it was, it's, it's lucky growing up in the same household with two, uh, band members, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, musical household, our mom and dad love music, not metal really, but, um, they, they instilled the love of music in us pretty much. And, um, they've grown to love it. So, <laughs> right. They had to. So you mentioned that it's lucky to grow up in a, in a metal family and have band members as your brothers, but it's also probably... There's a flip side to that as well, right? I would, it might seem that way, but I would say there's not really a downside because you can, <clears throat> we never had to spend time looking for bandmates. And also we can be straight up with each other. Uh, I know a lot of bands, pretty much every band who's not super close has to compromise on a lot of stuff. We just, we get in a lot of fights, but it's over in five minutes, which That's is cool. super, it's super productive. Yeah. Right. At least creatively. Excellent. So nonetheless is due out in about two weeks, I guess, right? Maybe three. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now that it's done and complete, how do you feel about it? Are you satisfied with the way it came out? Oh yeah. The only thing I wasn't, we were, were not really satisfied with this time is that um, we recorded it in January of 22. So it took too long to get out. Um, but we're working on that. We're rookies. It's yeah. uh, the album is one step closer to, you know, five albums down the line, we consider we want to make like the perfect Hammerhead album in the next 10 years. This is one step closer to that. Yeah, I mean, I've listened to Grand Currents and I absolutely love it. And when I was talking to John, he said, man, you got to get these guys on the show. And I totally dig what you're doing. Thank are you. you. Guys, are you guys all able to write together like in the same space or are you, are you guys distanced? Pretty much exclusively together. We've never written uh, separately, although we might try it soon. Um, we just jam in the basement and for like two hours a day and whatever comes out of that usually some idea comes out of at least one idea comes out of the session and we run with it and then after a few weeks if it's good we keep it if it's not it's trash so you guys are all living home then you must be able to bounce around ideas all day um yeah actually me and eli live um away now we live in our own house now but since abe is still at our parents house um we still jam there and we're looking we're moving out probably soon right they're like, probably going thank god we can finally have some peace and quiet and watch tv yes yeah we're looking for a place <laughs> we're looking for a place. are you guys all equal participants in the writing yeah uh, it wasn't that way until probably two years ago me and eli the drummer uh the two oldest were the main writers and now abe is straight up, he's he's equal like, like as of two years ago probably that's great so you said he's he's older well you guys are older but what by we're talking about by minutes right pretty much yeah he, he's <laughs> uh he abe is 16 eli's 18 i'm 21 so me and eli have been the creative guys in the band for most of the time but then two years ago abe you know became an right. equal in that sense that's great. So yeah. when you when you guys are writing, I don't know if this applies to Hammerhead, but are you writing music for like what it's going to sound like on the stage? 
Um, kind of. Um, it usually there's some there's like very few songs that don't translate. I think to the stage well, but that's kind of hand. Uh, I guess mostly I would agree with that. Yeah, they they mostly translate to the stage. Um, yeah. Do you uh do you ever find it difficult? translating a song that you've written or too many tracks too many parts too many something too technical to translate that onto the stage it's not usually too technical it's usually at least for now um we can de- we can play all of our songs live fully like we always make sure that's the caveat for it being on the record you know right but um it's usually because we only have a 30 to 40 minute set and when you when you have 30 to 40 minutes it's all like we make sure it's all pummeling stuff. It's not, it's not like we don't have time to do a slow eight minute song. Right. No lighting, no ballads with the lighter. Yeah. None of that shit. It's just, we'll do that later when we have like an hour or more, but right. now it's all fast shit. So just come out, make a statement, beat yeah. the shit out of him and move on. Pretty much. Let them know you were there. Yeah. Is there something you want your fans to take away from after listening to a hammerhead album or nonetheless more specifically? Um, I'd say if I usually like to give them context, like, um, like I said, this is one step closer to the album we're trying to achieve in the next 10 years or 15 years of hammerhead. So if you dig the, you know, what we're going for, the vision we have stick with us because it'll, it'll happen. We'll give you an album every year and a half and it'll, it'll be better every time. That's great. And I know you mentioned uh, sets, you know, 45 minute sets or whatever. Are you planning on taking this live? Have you already or? Uh, we've been What's... playing the songs. We've been playing most of nonetheless on uh, last year. We were planning live um, and we're planning on doing, yeah, a lot of shows this year. Two are announced thus far, but we're this summer. We're going to be everywhere. Cool. So when this record comes out, are you going to be uh, one of those guys that looks for it in the record stores? um me personally yeah i don't know we we thought about doing like a show at a record store locally to release it like a short show i don't know if that's gonna happen but abe is a record store guy i i don't really collect records like he does Mm -hmm. he might do it though i mean because i imagine the thrill of seeing you know a final product on a shelf for the public is probably unbelievable i can't wait to get in my hands i think we get the record in our hands this week oh so that's nice yeah, I can't wait. And they're printing vinyl? Yeah, yep. Vinyl for the people who pre-ordered and the people who order. If you order right now, it'll be at your doorstep release day. That's beautiful. Um, I forgot what I was going to just ask you. What do you see? What do you guys have next for Hammerhead? I know you're finishing up uh, tour plans or finishing up some show plans, but you continuing to write music? How does that work for you guys? Yeah, the cycles never end. Sorry, my dog is barking real quick. One second. I have the same problem, so no worries. He's an idiot. Sorry about <laughs> that. Um, ne- the cycle never stops, so um, we're writing again. We're, we've been writing since two months ago, and the next album will be in the works. We're trying to get it recorded this summer before oh, nice. we hit the road, or if not, after. And um, I hopefully the process from when we get in the studio next time to release day is shorter. So right. I'd love to have another one out in 2024, like nice for the summer of 2024. So don't take this the wrong way, but you guys are, are quite young. So where do you, without a lot of life experience, where do you draw your inspiration from when writing music, especially heavy music like this? Um, All the, it, I would agree. It's, it, it grow like our, um, you can definitely see our trajectory of the bands we've been into over the years. If you've listened to the first EP and then the last album, um, we, we pull from what we like. So we'll never claim to be totally original. I don't think a lot of bands are totally original, Fair but enough. our in our influences, um, you can hear them change over the years. They're all metal and some not metal. Um, but we pull from what we like. Basically what we want to hear is what we write. Right. So every everybody's got their gateway band, right? The band that got you into heavy music, maybe not necessarily metal, but harder stuff. Uh, for me, it was, you know, Ozzy Osbourne's Diary of a Mad Men, and I can clearly remember the day. But what was your gateway? Into metal? Yeah. Um, 
my first our first me and Eli and Abe's first gateway was Master of Puppets by Metallica. Um before that, we were listening to tons of Rush and Led Zeppelin and Boston and all those bands. Right. We still do. Um, my gateway into like heavier, heavier music was first Gojira, uh, then Meshuggah, um, Tool, Opeth, all those bands. Right. Yeah. A couple of gateways. That's beautiful. Yeah. And once it gets you, it doesn't let you go. Absolutely. Still hooked. Yep. And you probably will be forever. Yeah. And, but that's great though, because the music community, especially the heavier music community is very multi-generational. I mean, you got, yeah. you know, people my age, your age, my son's age and everywhere in between. And you go to these shows and everyone's there. I, it's awesome. That's what we love about it. It's fun to play those kind of shows. Yeah. I mean, and I imagine you've got people like me bringing their kids to see you that are right about, you know, your age or even younger. It's great. Oh yeah. Tons of it. I, we love that. That's so cool. I don't think you see that in any other music genre. Not as much. I definitely not as much. I agree. So what else do you have planned after, after that? And you got, you know, the tour plans or whatever, but what's next? Um, album. And then we're, we got some ideas for, uh, how we want to release the next album differently. Um, we're trying to grow the band in a kind of a, like the most organic way possible. Hopefully soon we can get away from uh, conventional social media and we're trying to find a way to do that basically because we are terrible at social media. We hate it and it's bad. It's just a bad thing. If our- you find a way to do it, please email me because it's sort of the nature of the beast, right? I can't stand it, but in order to keep the show going and do it, you know what I'm doing I have to be good at it too. And it sucks so much time and it's so difficult to just keep staying afloat with it. So I agree. It is the worst. I agree. But it's also a necessary (laughs) evil, right? Because you got to do it. That's what everybody says. So I, we devote a lot of time right now to figuring out plans of action, marketing plans of action that are, that don't involve social media. Um, And I, if we can crack the code, which it seems like everybody agrees is a necessary evil. And it, that's that's what it is for us right now. But um, if we can get if we can become self sustaining with no social media, that's the dream. It's it just sucks. Oh my god! And it's a time suck. There's so many things I need to be doing and working on, and and you know yeah. fine tuning. And I'm finding myself you know up late or wasting time during the day checking messages and keeping up with stuff. And because that's if you don't in this culture, people move on. They have zero attention span. I know, I know, which that's another thing you, I guess metal fans, I, I think there's a big portion of metal fans who have a a long attention span, you know, with the longer songs, the longer than normal. Yes. Yeah. Album album structure. So I think it's a good market to be in already. Um, especially because our songs are just longer in general. Right. Um, yeah, we're working on finding it. It's, it's a, it's a process and it's definitely, it's a process to get off. And then it's a process to start making actual money without being in the public eye all the time. You know what I mean? Right. You mean you can make money in the metal world? That's, that's what we're trying to do. (laughs) Unless, unless you want to be on the road for 200 days, which. Right. And, and even then the way gas prices are and the way the economy is, you're not making money. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, it's, it's, there's a bunch, it's like a puzzle. We're trying to put it together. We're not even close to done, but that's the goal. I mean, I don't know if you saw recently, but even anthrax canceled their European tour because they don't, they don't want to pay the whatever it is nine dollars a gallon in diesel fuel. It's not. Yeah, feasible. They, I I will say they. I've heard a lot of bands. This isn't our problem because we're not like uh, our tours are not glamorous at all. It's just a van, you know. Right. But bands who have like nice, nicely put together tours and they're older and they want to have some comfort. I if if they if my management and if I was older and they were like. We can't afford any of that. I'd be like, I don't even want to go then. You know, right? I've been doing this for thirty years. Why would I do that? Why would I hop in a van? Yeah, no way. Yeah, not going backwards for sure. Yeah, a but lot at, of. But at the same to token, it. you've got. I mean, luckily, Anthrax is way up there. But other bands, you've got people depending on you, right? You've got to feed people. You've got to feed yourself, yeah. and put a roof over your head. So you still kind of got to get out there if that's what you're going to do. 
if they can afford to cancel it and still, you know, make it right, they're probably doing it, quite all right. I'm sure, they can, which is cool. I, I, I'm, I agree with them. I mean, going down in lifestyle on tour after you've done this for 35 years, is, right? Doesn't make sense. It make yeah, makes no sense. Sweet. So, if fans want to find you guys, can you uh, drop your socials and all that fun stuff? Yeah, uh, on YouTube, it's just Hammerhead and Instagram, Hammerhead KC. Uh, those are the two main ones. The other and ones, it's H uh, E D D for those. Yeah, Hammer H E D D. Sorry about. Yeah, no, right. that's fine. H E D D uh, KC, right? Yep. Okay. Instagram, YouTube, main ones, uh, or the website. All right, cool. And did I miss anything that you wanted to cover? Because that was the end of my notes. No, all good. That's that's all. Yeah. I know we meandered a little bit, but I kind of like to just talk. So. Same here. I'm down to talk anytime. Sweet. I appreciate you taking the time, man. I really do dig what you're doing. John was right. You guys, you seem like nice guys. I hope it works out for you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you have, or I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Anytime. And I hope to uh, hear more stuff from you. And, you know, in the future, you want to talk again, hit John up or hit me up. I'm well down. Would love to. Thank you so much. Be well, my friend. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you'd cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effing Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. Oh.